Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Gearbest sent over the Zonestar Z5 Mark II 3D printer and it is quite an impressive machine. It is super cheap, you can get it for under $300 and right now I think you can get it for like $220 because of Black Friday and everything. So it's super low cost but it also has dual extrusion. That's just crazy for that price point. So today we're just gonna unbox it and assemble it and see if it is any good. And then in the first video I'm gonna review it and test it to every little bit and see what this little machine can do. So just like any other printer it comes in a brown cardboard box and since the printer isn't that big the box isn't that big either. After unboxing it I kind of looked at it and I was pleasantly surprised that there even is a printed instruction manual to, on how to assemble it. And that helped quite a bit as last time I only realized in the end that there was instructions on the SD card. But this time again there is an SD card included and I would recommend you to just look in that SD card first because there is the same instruction manual on there as well and some other information that you might want to know for later. In theory, assembling this printer should be very straightforward and on the website they claim something like 10 or 20 minutes and it's not like that at all. This printer, compared to my CR10 over here, is a pain in the butt to assemble. It may seem like this, these satisfying peels you can do on fresh devices, but it's not like that at all. It's a pain in the butt. You can barely get it to go off and it sticks way too well and the paper rips and one way to get it a little bit better is to go over the edges with sandpaper real fast because after they will, I guess, laser cut, the edges haven't cl been cleaned up. So the paper sticks slightly to the corners, which makes it ripping even more. And after you, you removed all the paper from the acrylic parts, you probably see that the advertised time is already up or even more. But let's not write that home too much. Then you just take the included screws and all the tools are included as well and then you start assembling it. And it's probably gonna go fine, but I've seen that the extru aluminum extrusion which this printer is made of is not that high quality. And so the T-nuts which are just supposed to drop in oftentimes don't drop in at all. And you have to slide them in from the edge and they might get might lock up at some point so it's not quite as smooth as on a CR10 over here which has much higher quality aluminum extrusions and from a distance they look exactly the same but the manufacturing tolerances on the one of the Zonestar are much lower but also I just want to say that again the Zonestar is almost half the price of the CR10 just have to keep that in mind when I make these little comparisons and apart from that, the instruction manual is good, as in it's printed, but it's not exactly for this printer. There are quite a few differences, but with some common sense, the instruction manual and what's printed on the parts themselves, you should be able to assemble it within a couple hours. And if you're like me, after assembling it, you just need a break first to get all the anger out of you. But if you don't lose your temper quite as easily, you want to calibrate it a little bit. Now, there is a bed leveling sensor included, but I haven't gotten that thing working yet. I don't think that's even that big of a deal, because you're probably not going to be limited by that. You have a screw in the back of the printer where you can adjust the C height roughly, and then you have the screws in all the four corners of the heated bed, where you can move your extruder there, turn the screws till it's only you can have a, like a piece of paper in between and do that for all four corners and then you're set. Now one thing you have to be careful of is the heated bed isn't very stable. Meaning that after you tighten the screw you're gonna have to let loose and see how high it is. Cause depending if you push, push or pull on it, it's gonna have quite a big difference. And that again is because of the manufacturing intolerances. But after you sorted all of that out, the first print, in my case, was really amazing. Now I couldn't get the dual color prints of the SD card working, 
So I just sliced up a 3D Benji of my own and wow! I'm blown away by the print quality that this little cheap printer produces. Now I'm gonna go into more detail in the f final review, but so far how flimsy the whole construction is, I mean the top thing it literally wobbles around and I was sure that I would have to print support material, like support braces to even get a usable print out of it. But this 3D Benchy is on par with the brand new of the CR10 and in some area it even surpasses it. But it does have some issues. Um, I'm gonna go into more detail in the final review, but for the price this printer is amazing so far. So if you are a tinkerer yourself and you want to play around with a printer and you don't have to have it working right away, I recommend buying this one while it's on sale for the holidays right now. And if you want to know a bit more then you can wait for my final review which is gonna be out in like a week or two. But so far big thumbs up for this printer. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe so you don't miss the full review when it's out. I also have my social media accounts linked down below and all the other links that you might want to know. This description diary is really magical. You should expand it and maybe look at it. Yeah, not many people do that, but yeah, do it. Thanks for watching and until next time.